any anything that um uh, that was highlighted or anything that uh, specifically um you know spoke to your heart about the way the holy spirit worked in the holy uh, you know any takeaway anything at all that you learned new or you know just feel free to share anyone okay yeah go ahead uh, robert so i was having a question about regarding the holy spirit as we see yeah. in the soul's life so as we see in the soul's life the when god and when god's anger came upon soul the holy spirit he was having it departed from him and a devilish and a evil spirit came upon him like god wanted him to be thrown out of the kingdom the lord wanted to the take israel's kingdom and give it to david so what i was thinking today or in the today's life also it can happen sir like so in, um, yeah see certainly we can move away from uh, the plan and the purposes of god right we can reject uh, the the work of god in our lives we can do that you know as individuals we since we have free choice we can uh, free will we can move away from god and uh, and obviously if we are moving away from god and if we are uh, you know as uh, backsliding right uh, not really seeking him then then obviously god cannot use us right uh, in the in the manner maybe somebody is in ministry and like somebody is a pastor and and uh, if you know that person is not really seeking god is not is is you know obviously the person can go off right um it can be for a season maybe like, i don't know maybe a decade or so and then you know a person can go off and which means that god cannot and will not use that uh, person as he wanted him to you know so that is possible yeah but the but the but but from what we see the work of the spirit is that he will stay and he will uh, convict and he will lead us back uh you know he, he he will constantly do that consistently do that um yeah but but it's up to us to listen and obey thank you pastor yeah right, right robert okay any any other thoughts or any other questions okay um in in, uh, in what way were you challenged you know when you read through did it stir up anything inside of you um did you you know make certain decisions um based on how you know we learned about how the spirit was moving in the old testament on different people you know any any choices any decisions that you made anything at all or any questions you know if you have you can share Okay. Pass in the Ezekiel incident. Did the spirit of God enter him and make him stand up, like physically, or it was his own strength that he uh, stood? Um, yeah, it, it's it says here that uh, the spirit lifted him up. You no, know, in other place in Ezekiel, I forget the reference. It also says that, uh, like, uh, a person actually uh, reaches out to one lock of his hair. and uh, you know lifted him up and he stood on his feet and and like that so uh, well i i would say that uh, you know it is possible that it was a you know that was a it was a physical thing as well like um uh you know it, like when we read about elijah uh, and that conversation that he has with obadiah and how he says you know that you come and then the spirit of lord will take you somewhere um and of course that is what happened when uh, elijah elisha was taken up uh, in that chariot of uh, set of flames then we see in um, acts chapter 8 uh, when we read about uh, uh, philip uh, from samaria he's he's taken away you know like the baptism happens what a baptism the ethiopian eunuch is uh, baptized he comes out of the water and then the spirit of god uh, takes him away and he's found at azotus um, so well it is possible we can't rule out it is possible that uh, the spirit of god physically you know uh, just lifted him up yeah. yes sir 
yeah like what is the purpose of it i don't know you know like uh, well, we could have just spoken to him, but the, what is the purpose of it uh, maybe it is so that he he doesn't forget that encounter you know it, uh, that supernatural encounter because you can never forget an experience right um yeah so that will be fresh and clear in his mind so maybe it is that i'm just just my opinion yeah yes pastor thank you yeah okay, okay. okay so uh, so let's move on and um, you know the this um, topic is also very interesting the work of the holy spirit in the life of uh, the lord jesus so what happened you know uh, before uh, the lord was uh, 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 like uh, when we before the work of the spirit in his uh, in his life so we see several people several um, characters who were there and, um, upon the holy spirit moved and they uh, Uh, and and that is recorded for us here so let's look at um, uh, we'll come to john the baptist john the baptist is also one of the persons but he was a you know uh, we know that he was a contemporary of the lord so uh, read that um, a little later but let's look at luke chapter 1 and verse 35 okay and uh, these are scriptures that we go to especially you know during um, you know during christmas time right uh, everything uh, luke chapter 1 uh, we always read this okay so luke chapter 135 uh the it's a conversation uh between mary and the angel uh angel gabriel which comes with a message who comes with a message of uh, uh of the savior and it was 35 and the angel answered and said to her the holy spirit will come upon you and this is in response to a question right uh, so angel says you know you will bear a son and uh, and you will do this you know he will be called the son of the highest and so on and then mary says you know see i'm Uh, you know i'm a virgin i don't have uh, I, i don't know a man um then the angel answered and said the holy spirit will come upon you and the power of the highest will overshadow you and also that holy one who is to be born will be called the son of god okay so um so mary the the earthly mother of the lord jesus um has this conversation and uh, the holy spirit uh, uh, holy spirit brought about a miraculous uh conception uh, and a natural birth actually the birth was natural the conception was supernatural right so that is what we see um uh, here okay um and we see us uh, same thing in matthew chapter 1 as well okay so let's look at uh, verse 41 then uh, this is uh, uh, mary who goes to uh, meet with elizabeth who's a relative of uh, mary and uh, verse 40 says and uh, mary goes and enter the house of zacharias and greeted elizabeth okay she just goes and says hey hello elizabeth how are you verse 41 and it happened when elizabeth heard the greeting of mary that the babe leaped in her womb you know um, so the baby moved in her womb and elizabeth was filled with the holy spirit then she spoke out with a loud voice and said blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb but why is this granted to me that the mother of my lord should come to me for indeed as soon as the voice of your greeting sounded in my ears the babe leaped leaped in my womb for joy blessed is she who believed for there will be a fulfillment of those things which were told her from the lord wow amazing right uh, very exciting times uh, very uh, maybe for the people who are going through this is, uh, you know amazement wonder fear difficult times as well but this is what uh, was happening so um, so mary goes greets elizabeth elizabeth uh, in the womb of elizabeth is john the baptist and uh, you know john the baptist as a baby not yet born that this uh, you know leaps um and mary was filled with the holy i mean sorry elizabeth was filled with the holy spirit and she begins to prophesy okay she begins to confirm certain things and she begins to uh, you know ex- or encourage right now uh, here it is you know blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb now you know nobody has told her and uh, i mean it's not recorded there's no information right and it's not something that you would go and tell mary would was actually uh, very careful she told uh, you know joseph and and you know joseph was not too pleased uh, and then but god 
spoke to Joseph as well through that dream and asked him to, you know, not uh, discard uh, or put away Mary. Right. So, so this is uh, this is what. So he, we see here that uh, Mary is prophesying, and uh, and also we see that she is confirming something that the angel told her. Okay, uh, about the uh, about the son who is to be born. So blessed is the fruit of your womb. And he's saying, the mother of my Lord. Okay. Um, and, uh, and and also, uh, she's saying, verse 45, Blessed is she who believed, for there will be a fulfillment of those things which were told her from the Lord. A confirmation of that information that Mary herself received from the Lord, that in that angelic encounter. So what was it? The angel also says, right? A angel says, um, uh, you know, the uh, in verse thirty-five, this will be uh, uh, what th this will be what will happen. The power of the highest will overshadow the holy one. Will be called son of God. Now Mary responds like this in verse thirty-eight to that whole um, you know encounter. As they, as soon as the angel, you know, finishes by saying, "For with God nothing will be impossible," Mary says, "Let it be to me according to your word." Right? Let it be to me according to your word. And then, verse forty-five, we see there will be a fulfillment of those things which were told her from the Lord. Okay, and uh, and then Mary goes on to sing a song. Right? Uh, my soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit is rejoiced. And and uh, she stays there for about three months, and so on. So, so this is what happens, right? Mary and Elizabeth encounter. Uh, then we read about in the same chapter. We read, read about Zechariah. Okay, now um, uh, Zechariah, and he is um, uh, he is there. He uh, let's just go down to us. Um, sorry, I'm just. Uh, So they rejoiced with the. I'm, I'm, just, I'm sorry. Uh, no, I'm just going back uh, to chapter one, and we read about Zechariah when he was serving as a priest, and in the and it was his custom. Like we, re, we look at verse eight, right? It was his custom to go and burn incense, and uh, and what happened to him, right? He um, there was again a message given to him, and he he, he had a doubt. He did not believe, and then uh, you know he could not uh, speak. He was mute for a season. Right now, um, when we uh, when uh, in verse sixty one, uh, sorry, in verse fifty nine, we see that uh, you know they wanted to know what name he should call uh, John, who was born. I mean, sorry, uh, the baby that is born, and. Um, uh, Elizabeth answered and said, "He should be called John." Okay, then they were all wondering. You know, there's nobody like that. And then um, he writes uh, in a, on a on a uh, he writes on a slate. Um, his name shall be uh, John. And then his mouth opened and uh, he spoke. He praising he was praising God and so on. Now immediately after that, we read in verse 67 that he was filled with the Spirit. Okay, he has these supernatural things happening, and he's filled with the spirit, and he prophesied. He prophesied over his son, and very, very interesting, right? He's saying, "Blessed is the Lord God of Israel." Sixty-eight, for He has visited and redeemed His people, and raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of His servant David. And He spoke by the mouth of His holy prophets, um, who have been since the world began, and so on. He's talking about the um, about the Savior, and verse uh, 76, and you child, will be called the prophet of the highest, for you will go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the remission of their sins, through the tender mercy of our Lord, of our God, which was the day spring from on high, has visited us, and so on. So, uh, you know, about the Savior and about the forerunner, uh, right there, uh, the Spirit of God causes him to prophesy of what is to come. You know, the purpose, the the purpose of their lives, uh, what is to come, and so on. Right. Uh, so we see that. Okay. And then we read about Simeon. Okay. We read about Simeon in uh, chapter two. 
uh, we uh, they bring uh, the the baby the baby is born the baby Jesus is born and they bring uh, the baby to the temple and uh, and this is what we uh, read Luke chapter two twenty five okay uh, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And this man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. You know. So you see, you know, uh, God is orchestrating things. God is uh, moving upon people, and we see all this uh, happening uh, right at that time before the Lord was born, and after the Lord was born, and what we. Um, it has been revealed to him. It had been revealed to him, verse twenty-six, that the Holy by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. So he came by the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, right, the custom of circumcision, he took up in his arms and blessed God, and said. You know, I, I just marveled at the way, the way, you know, it is, uh, it is written here. It says, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have pre prepared before the face of all prophets, a light to bring revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people, Israel. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were sp spoken of him. Then Simon, Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, bless, bless, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rising of many in Israel and for a sign which will be sp spoken against. Yes, a sword will pierce through your own soul also. The thoughts of many hearts will be revealed. So he prophesies about the Lord Jesus. Uh, but the thing is that the Holy Spirit has had already revealed to him. Okay, Had already spoken to him and already revealed to him. So he has been having a very intimate walk with God. It, uh, you know, it's described that he was a, a just and a devout person. He's been handy, having an intimate work with God. Um, and uh, the Holy Spirit had told him that he would not die before seeing the face of Christ. Uh, and so he came by the Spirit into the temple, meaning that that particular day he was led by the Spirit to come into the temple. Okay, so he, here he comes. And we're not sure like how many people were there and uh, that day, you know, how many parents were there who brought their children for the ritual uh, to be done according to the law. So we don't know, but uh, I mean, we can assume, you know, let, let's say there were many, then it is amazing how Simeon actually zeroed in on this couple, Mary and Joseph, and uh, zeroed in on the baby Jesus, obviously led by Spirit of God. Or even if they were, you know, they were the only couple there uh, with the baby, um, you know, then then also the fact that the Holy Spirit enabled them to recognize, yes, this is is this is the one. So he goes, collects the baby, carries the baby in his arms, and uh, he prophesies, and he confirms um, the prophecy of uh, uh, of the past, right? He says, you know, my eyes have seen your salvation. Okay. So, um, yeah, 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 Divya, go ahead. Yeah, best friend, just have a question. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, just uh, like after Jesus' uh, resurrection, the Holy Spirit is being sent and uh, he dwells with us forever. So before, yeah. uh, during his transition from Old Testament till the time when the Holy Spirit was given to the believers in Acts. So uh, during this time, how was the ministry of the Holy Spirit? It was, uh, was it like that in the time of the Old Testament, the Spirit would come and just go or was it... How, yeah. How was yeah. So the time, um, you know, during the earthly ministry of the Lord and uh, till the ascension, right? So that is the time frame that we're looking at. So it, it, um, you know, on the, on the Lord or in the Lord, uh, we see that is something that we're going to see now. Again, uh, we see the Holy Spirit coming and resting upon Him. So it was not like coming and going. You know, uh, the Spirit coming and you know, uh, resting upon Him. Um, but uh, we also know that uh, there were others uh, upon whom the spirit was revealing. You know, like um, uh, I'm just thinking about uh, um, 
uh, for example, uh, I think it's uh, Matthew. Uh, I forget the reference, but you know, in, in uh, response to um, the ministry of the Lord, okay. Um, let me just state that uh, in, in response to the ministry of the Lord, especially in deliverance, right? And uh, uh, the the Pharisees uh, get around and um, they uh, they kind of um, uh, they're saying, you know, this man is doing all these things, all these signs that he's doing. So uh, we need to do something. Right. If he if he uh, if he continues to do like this, then uh, we'll lose our place. And uh, you know, I, I'm I'm not getting the reference. I'm sure it's there in the notes. But um, so that is what they say, right? Uh, and we see that Caiaphas, uh, who was there, who was uh, one of them, uh, he actually uh, prophesies. Right? He didn't know it was uh, prophecy, but he actually prophesies. So we see that. Well, the spirit of God was. Uh, it was a transition time. It was a bit of both that was happening. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Pastor. Right. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Okay. Right. So, um, so we see uh, uh, we read about Zechariah, we read about Simeon, and uh, and then we re read about uh, you know John the Baptist as well, um, and. Uh, um, you know, we when we go to uh, Matthew three and verse eleven, Matthew three verse eleven, um, there's John the Baptist. He's ministering. He's baptizing people. Um, and uh, verse eleven, he he testifies about the Lord. Okay, he he says, you know, this is what I do, and this is what the Lord will do. Okay, he says, um, three and verse eleven, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals are not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. And his winnowing fan in his hand, he will thoroughly uh, clean out his threshing floor and gather his wheat into the barn, but he will burn up the shaft with unquenchable fire. And then, you know, we see the Lord Jesus coming and uh, uh, he uh, ministering uh, in baptism, and we see that, right? Um, so we see that uh, um, the the reference, uh, I mean, uh, John the Baptist referring to the Lord and saying, um, "This is He." You know, he will baptize with the Holy Spirit, and He will baptize. Uh, he's go He's going to do something in your lives. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Okay, so. Um, uh, so we so we see that right okay then we move on to how the holy spirit uh moved in the life of jesus okay worked in his life and um, and this truth is also something very very crucial very important for us to grasp um because it uh, it actually refers to our life and our ministry okay and some of the things that the lord asks us to do or, uh, or instructs us to walk in the kind of standards that he that he wants us to keep right uh, etc where it rules out all kinds of excuses for us as human beings okay let's see how okay um so uh, let's let's go to matthew 3 again so matthew 3 uh, John the Baptist comes and uh, okay if you're following in your notes it's uh, I'm, I'm looking at page 11 chapter 4 right and uh, uh, the section of work of the Holy Spirit in the life of Jesus so um, Matthew 3 and verse uh, 16 uh, uh, immediately after the conversation with uh, the Lord Jesus has with John John the Baptist John the Baptist is uh, baptizes him verse 16 when he had been baptized jesus came up immediately from the water and behold the heavens were open to him and he saw the spirit of god descending like a dove and alighting upon him and suddenly a voice came from heaven saying this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased you know we looked at these the scripture as a picture of the triune God, right? We see the son, we see, we hear the voice of the father 
uh, who says, this is my beloved son. And we see also the reference to the Holy Spirit ascend, I mean, descending and, and alighting upon the son um, like a dove, right? So we see that the Holy Spirit coming and uh, descending and alighting upon the Lord Jesus. Okay. Then we see in the, in the next chapter, uh, Matthew chapter 4, we see that uh, he was led by the Spirit, okay, uh, 4 and verse 1, Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterward he was hungry. And then the whole experience of the devil tempting and the Lord refuting with the word uh, happens there. And then verse 11, then the devil left him. And behold, angels came and ministered to him. So we see this very important, um, uh, you know, aspect of uh, the ministry of the Lord. You know, our it it the victory of the Lord uh, immediately after being baptized in water, baptized by the Holy Spirit, and uh, and we see this temptation that he overcomes by the 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 word, the living word, using the word in order to. Uh, overcome the temptation, right? So that's something. And he was led by the Spirit in order to in order to face this and overcome. And that's a beautiful thing. Like it, it was to it was to defeat. It was to overcome. You know this temptation. And we see after that, right after that, we see the the ministry. Uh, just unfolding, right? He goes, he, uh, you know, we read about the wedding of Cana and uh, we also read about, uh, um, I think we, uh, I think that we see in Mark, right? Mark chapter one and verse 12, maybe we can go there. So we see all that unfolding right after this, immediately after this. Okay, so, um, so that is uh, kind of uh, significant for us that he was baptized in water, baptized by the Spirit, um, overcame the temptation, and then he he goes on um, uh, out of the uh, the and goes into the ministry, you know, uh, calling out and choosing the disciples and so on. Okay, and now Luke chapter four and verse fourteen. Okay, let's look at that verse. Luke four and verse fourteen. Immediately after the. Uh, you know, the temptation. This is how, uh, what is recorded. Then Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee. And news of him went out through all the surrounding region. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified by all. And then right after that is how he reads from the scroll, in the synagogue scroll of Isaiah. And uh, he reads that section from Isaiah 61, what we read a little while ago. And then he says, today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing and so on. So uh, the thing is this, that he returned in the power of the Spirit. He was baptized by the Spirit. He returned in the power of the Spirit. And uh, what followed was the uh, earthly ministry. Okay, So the question or, or the, the, the thing that we see is that he ministered, Jesus ministered by the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay. Now, um, uh, the question is, you know, we, we can ask, you know, wasn't Jesus already, wasn't Jesus God? So what's so, what's so great? What's so uh, great about him doing the things that he did? Right? He is God. And of course, he has the, the power to, to heal, to create. Oh, he was there, right at creation. Right? We read Colossians 1, talks about the fact that uh, everything was made through him. Okay, John chapter 1 also talks about that. And nothing was made that was made apart from him. Um, so it was for him, by him, through him, and all that we see, right? Um, so uh, so then what is what is this big deal about you know him being empowered by the Spirit, he returning in the power of the Holy Spirit and, and, and this ministry? Okay. So the, uh, the thing for us to understand is this, that we, uh, we see uh, in Philippians chapter 2 that he made himself of no reputation. Okay, the English word used there is reputation. And uh, uh, it says that he made himself or he emptied himself. Um, the word that is used there is in the Greek is kenuo, which means uh, empty, to make empty. 
Okay, so let's go there. Philippines chapter 2. Um, it says, um, uh, Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant and coming in the likeness of men. Okay. And uh, it says, And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death even the death of the cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of those in heaven, of those on earth, and of those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Okay, So let's look at verse 7 again, that he made himself of no reputation. So that um, uh, word there means to make empty. Now we know that, you know, Jesus never stopped being God. Okay. Um, but the fact is that um, on the earth, he walked as man. Okay. Now, you know, it's, it's again a mystery. Um, but, you know, we, we can understand, right? We can understand certain things about that in the sense that he walked as man. He emptied himself, it says. He made himself of no reputation and he walked as man. So, you know, when he when he was on the earth, he was deity. He was God. In origin, he was God. He was before, like, even before everything, he, he was there. In the beginning was the word. So he was there. But we see that uh, when he walked on the earth, he made himself of no reputations, which means that he laid aside or he chose to walk as a human being. Okay. Now, how, how why do we say that? And how can we say that? Because we know that God is omnipresent, omnipresent, present everywhere. But on the earth and in the confines of the earthly human body wrapped in flesh, he did not or he was not omnipresent. He did not display his omnipresence. Right? We see that he, he was here in one place, then he would move to another place. In fact, he told his uh, disciples, I must preach this good news in all the other towns and cities also. So it wasn't like he was there in several places all at once, you know, along with team one, team two, team three, team four, you know, it wasn't like that. Right? He was in one place, he finished, he moved on, he was in the other place and then on. So we see that he was not Omni, omnipresent in his earthly ministry. Okay. The other thing that we see is that God is omniscient, you know, all knowing. But we see several references that he grew in wisdom. Okay. Luke chapter 2, verses uh, 46. Um, maybe we'll look at that scripture. Luke 2, and verse 46. So it was that after three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the teachers, both listening to them and asking them questions. And Jesus, verse 52, and Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and men. So we see that there is an increase. You know, How can you increase uh, you know, someone who is, uh, increase wisdom? someone who is omniscient. Okay, so obviously he chose to lay aside that, that aspect and walk in, walk as a human being. So he increased in wisdom. Okay. In fact, uh, uh, it says that he was, uh, John chapter 8 and verse 28, um, John 8 verse 28, um, he says that um, uh when you lift up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am He, and that I do nothing of myself, but as the Father taught me, I speak these things. Okay, um, so He says, "As the Father taught me, as the Father," and then another place He says, "As the Father, whatever I see the Father do, that I do also." So He increased in wisdom. He was taught by the Father, and uh, in one place where they asked Him, you know, uh, when will this happen? Uh, you know that day 
uh, the day of the Lord's return, he said, you know, um, no one knows it except the Father. Okay, so you know, we can ask uh, Lord Jesus, you're you're omniscient. You know, don't you know that, right? But the the fact is that when he walked on the earth, he walked as uh, as uh, during his earthly ministry, he walked as a human being, right? And uh, in uh, Mark 13 and verse 32, it says. Uh, uh, and that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Okay, so at that point, you know, he was not being omniscient, and uh, we need to understand that. Okay, so uh, when Jesus walked on the earth, okay, um, John chapter 1 and verse 14 talks about how he walked on the earth and the kind of glory that he walked with. Okay, so let's turn to um, the book of John, chapter 1. Okay, John chapter 1 and uh, verse 14 says, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld, which means, and we saw his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Okay, so he, the, the what is John saying? He said, you know, the word became flesh. Okay, uh, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, the word was God. The word became flesh. Right? So at this point in time, the word became flesh, and John was the apostle there. He saw, uh, he saw that because uh, you know he was uh, chosen and he was called by the Lord Jesus. Word became the uh, word became flesh, and he says, "We beheld, we saw his glory." What is that word, glory? Okay, the Greek word used there is doxa, okay, which means to make visible or to make manifest or to make apparent. Okay, so make visible to make manifest. So what was he making manifest? about himself okay when you say the glory of god it means that he is making manifest or making visible who he is and what he does okay um did somebody raise their hand or want to ask a question i just heard a ping so okay anyway so so this is what we see right um, so we see that he walked in glory we saw his glory, John says. So what was that glory? Okay, uh, What he did, what he said, uh, was that the glory of the Father? Okay, I'll look, If you look at John chapter 17 and verse 5, um, John 17 and verse 5, it says, And now, O Father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. Okay, so in, in simple terms, just answer, you know, just remember the word glory, doxa, means to make visible, make uh, or put on a display. And it, in simple terms, it just means uh, the the power of who God is and what he can do. Because okay? it's, it's, or who someone can do, who someone is and what that person can do. The glory of God, right? So uh, the word doxa. So which means that um, here John is saying we beheld his glory, and here the Lord is saying, "Glorify me together." Now he's praying to the Father and he's saying, "With the glory that I had, which means that uh, which I had before you, before the world was, had with you before the world was." So what is the Lord saying? Lord is saying that you know, uh, the, what is the inference that that on the earth the disciples could see a glory who he was and what he did and that was not the glory that he had before the world began when he was with the father so we can say that um, he walked he laid aside that glory and he walked as man right he walked in what we can call as sonship glory right and um, that's not a you know term that is there in in scripture but just for uh, you know, for us to explain, he walked in what is called a sonship glory. Okay, and um, uh, chapter the same chapter was uh, twenty two, and the glory which you gave me, I have given them that they may be one, just as we are one. So the sonship glory, the Lord is saying, uh, Father, you know, I'm giving these disciples. Okay, um, so again, what is glory? Glory is doxa, which means to make visible to put on display. Uh, what are you putting on display? Who God is and what he can do. 
okay, here in this context, you know, who God is and what he can do. So the, Father, the Lord is saying, the disciples, okay, John saying, you know, we saw who he is and what he did, referring to Jesus. The Lord is saying, the Lord is saying in um, uh, chapter 17, verse 5, he's saying, what he did and what he what what the things that I was and what I did that I had when I was with you, God uh, is saying, you know, glorify me with yourself with that same kind of glory. Okay, and in verse twenty-two here we read that that glory which you gave me as I walked on the earth, I have given to my disciples. Okay, so we we'll, uh, we'll look at it over and over again. Okay, but try to grasp this okay so um, so that is something that we need to understand okay so that he walked on the earth um, there was he emptied himself of the glory that he had with the father when he was with him but when he came down he walked as man and he walked in what the disciples could see you know they saw what he did and they uh, who he was and it was something called a sonship glory we can call it a sonship glory okay and um uh, secondly, we read about what uh, the Lord himself and what the apostles uh, who were there following him, observing him closely, said about the ministry of the Lord Jesus. Okay. Um, let's say we, uh, we look at, uh, first of all, John chapter 4, um, John chapter, uh, sorry, uh, Luke chapter 4 and uh, verse 17, Luke 4. Okay, let's go there, Luke 4. Um, this is, again, the setting is the synagogue. Uh, the Lord is taking the scroll, and uh, Sabbath day, he stands up to read, and uh, he reads out the uh, scripture from Isaiah 61. Okay, verse 18, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me. Okay, he has uh, smeared. Anoint means to smear, to uh, completely cover Right. It also means to empower and so on. So um, he has anointed me for what? To for the ministry. Okay. The spirit of the Lord, he has done this. And he goes on to uh, uh, share about what the spirit of the Lord is going to sh uh, share the good news to the poor and, and so on. Right? Um, and we see a similar thing in Matthew chapter 12 and verse um, 28. Okay. Let's um, go to Matthew 12. And uh, verse 28, okay, so um, he's talking about his ministry. Now here he says, uh, you know, the spirit of the Lord is upon me to do this, right? Um, and, and we see here in verse 28, if I cast out demons by the spirit of God, okay, so it is the spirit of God who is enabling me. In other words, he's saying hey, it is the spirit of God who's enabling me to do this work of deliverance. Just like he said, you know, the spirit of the Lord is upon me to share the gospel, to open the prison doors, to, to heal blind or make uh, blind eyes open and all those wonderful things. And here he's testifying uh, uh, because people were saying, you know, he's casting out by the demon, by the demon, Be Beelzebub's power is what he's casting out. He's saying, no, it was, it's not Beelzebub's power, but it's another power, which is the Holy Spirit power. And he's saying, if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, some translations say finger of God, uh, the older uh, King James, finger of God or Spirit of God, surely the rule and reign of God, the kingdom of God has come upon you. Okay, So that's the thing. That's, that's, that, that's, that is what he talked about himself, right? about his ministry, the, um, empower, the, the way he walked and the way he ministered. This is what... Um, he says about himself. Another uh, place is Acts chapter 10. Okay, Acts chapter 10 and verse 38. Okay, let's go there. Acts chapter 10, verse 38. What does it say? It says, and how God anointed. So this is Luke writing, right? Uh, recording for us in Acts chapter 8. Uh, so he's saying, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. Okay. And who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. So what the Lord prophesied about himself, and he said, no, this is fulfilled, 
So this is a fulfillment of the prophecy from Isaiah 61. So he said that. And then he testified to those people who were saying, hey, he's got power, but it's a different power. He told them, no, this is, this is Holy Spirit power. Okay. And cast it out by the Spirit of God. Okay. And uh, Luke rep records here, you know, he was anointed with the Holy Spirit and with power, and he went about doing good. So we see that um, uh, there was this emptying. He walked on the earth as man. He was empowered by the Holy Spirit. And he did what he did as man, empowered by the Holy Spirit. And which is why when we read John chapter 14, uh, it makes sense now. Right? John chapter 14 and verse 12, you know, uh, he says, most assuredly, okay, if you can all turn to John chapter 14, 12, uh, sorry, John chapter 14 and verse 12. He says, most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do because I go to my father. So the question is, you know, how can this happen, right? How can I do the works that he, he did or he does? Because he is God and I am not. Very clear, right? He is God. And I am not. So how can, Lord Jesus, how can you say that I will do these things? And right in that verse, towards the end of that verse, uh, the Lord gives a key. Okay, He says, he will, you will do these works, he who believes in me, and greater works. And then he says, because I go to my Father. Okay, Now that's the key. Because I go to my Father. If you come down, um this is what uh, he says you know if <laughs> um verse 15 if you love me keep my commandments and then he says i will pray the father and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever verse 17 the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him but you know him for he dwells with you and will be in you okay and then as you go down uh, it says, <coughs> uh, excuse me, um, just give me a minute, sorry. Okay, and then he says in uh, verse uh, for 26, the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you and bring to your remembrance all the things that I said to you. Okay, so the key is this, that, <coughs> excuse me. Um, that the helper is coming and is, is it's tied to Jesus going to the Father and uh, us as believers doing the things that he did and the greater works. Right? It's amazing. It's um, it's it's mind blowing. But for Jesus, it was like, you know, this is what I, this is what you will do. And the key is this, it's because I go to my father and what will happen? The father will send the helper and he will be with you. He will be in you. He will abide with you forever. And you will do these things that I've called you to do. It's amazing, right? That the father, that God would, you know, entrust us with ministry. That the Lord would empower us for ministry in this way. And he would do it uh, by the power of the Holy Spirit. And which is the only way, which is the only reason why he would say, you know, you can do the things that I do, right? Because he empowers us to do it. And the things that he did, he was also empowered by the same source, the same source, the Holy Spirit. Okay. Okay. So we'll stop here and uh, we'll continue with this uh, topic um, about, uh, especially about the glory of the Lord and walk the uh, the the sonship glory that he walked in you know we'll we'll discuss that again and then we'll proceed okay and if you have questions you know you can put in that link remember go to the classwork section because all those videos are there but uh, right down you will see uh, uh, the link uh, which is for a google sheet where you can enter your questions there okay so thank you and uh, yeah today is for friday god bless uh, today's thursday right uh, we'll catch up next week god bless you guys bye bye Thank you, Pastor. Hello, sir. Thank you. See you. See you. Bye-bye. Thank Take you, care. Pastor.